I'm going to introduce where you can find some more genomes in case you're looking at doing some comparisons. One place to find them is in the NCBI database and there's a fair list of genomes in there. If I just type in this one here and select genomes here. And then if you go on genome assembly and annotation report, you see there's 15 of them. And these are in various levels of assembly, with this here being a complete genome assembly and the others being incomplete. There's another place where you can find genomes. If you go over to PubMLST, this is Public Database for Molecular Typing and Microbial Genome Diversity. Now, if you go on to Organisms, I'm interested in looking at Neisseria. So if I select N for Neisseria, see down here, there's various options that you can go to to access other genomic data. So if I go into isolate collections, I'm going to search Neisseria isolate database, search database. You go into here and then select species. Again, select Neisseria subflava and display all records and then press search. This actually brings up a list of other genomes. This also has other isolate information with it. So some of these, uh, I think about two of these on here are actually duplicated and present on the NCBI database, but it actually also includes a lot of other isolates that aren't present on the NCBI database. It's a country where it was identified the year as well, and also whether it's been associated with the disease. Now, Sirius subflava is a commensal, but you can see for some of these, it's actually been uh, taken from a subject where it's been involved in an invasive disease, but most of the time it's carrier, so it's uh, commensal. There's a couple of interesting things you can do at this point. If you go down to the bottom of the page, you can actually get the sequence data for this. The way to do that is to select one of these. You can actually see here, number of contexts that it was assembled into, the length of the genome according to the context. And there's a few things that you can do here. You can actually extract the sequence. So if I go show sequence bin, then you can go on to faster. If you open that and just have a look. So you'll see here, this is the faster sequence for that genome. And this is one that isn't actually present on NCBI. So it's quite interesting and there's quite a lot to choose from if you go back and have a look at your list. So if you're looking for more information, especially if you find that what you're trying to look at doesn't have an awful lot of sequence genomes on the NCBI database, you can always check through here and just see if there's any other ones. As you can see, where there's 15 on the NCBI database here, there's quite a lot more actually present here. There you go, that's one thing to do for extra data. Now there's another interesting thing that I was just gonna highlight, and it goes back to identifying species. I know I talked about MOVE previously, where you can actually use MOVE to align genomes and look for similarities to try and sort of strengthen the case for assigning an isolate to a particular species. But within the PubMST database, there's a tool called Genome Comparator. If you go onto Genome Comparator, okay, you'll see you've got this here. It's just one of the many tools that's present on this website. What you need to do, if you clear that, is make a list of genomes. If you have a look here, I've put together a list of genomes with one that's unknown. What I've got is a genome, try to do some sort of analysis on it, try and establish exactly what it is. And I've done that through various means. If I bring up this table here, this is just an example. So here I did some biochemical tests and I looked using API testing, which told me that all of my species that I'd isolated were Neisseria. Then I did some typing using RMLST, so ribosomal multi locus sequence typing, and I did some typing using the 16S gene. But you can see these gave me some variations in terms of what it thought that the species was. MOVE was one thing that you can do with the genomic data and align it against some of these and find out which one actually appears to be a better fit. But the genome comparator tool is also useful at this point. What you do is you select a range of genomes. Say, for example, here, 
I've got an isolate and I've got anything ranging from Neisseria flavicens, mucosa and perflava. What I've done is I've put together a folder and in it I've put a range of different Neisseria species. So I've got subflava, sicca mucosa, meningitidus, lactamica, gonorrhea. So the two pathogens in there, elongata as well as my unknown. Now what you need to do at this point is you need to then convert that to a zip file. It's basically sent to compressed folder and it will create a zip file for you. What you do then is in the genome comparator tool, you're going to compare genome that you're interested in trying to find out or see what it matches to, to the other ones. Whereas the RLMST and 16S typing use a small number or just one particular gene. In this case, the whole genome comparator will actually look and compare against a much larger number of genes. So what I'll do is you need to put your zip folder in there and then here, so you can select schemes to actually do the typing of your unknown. You can choose MLST, ribosomal MST, but here I'm going to select this. So it says here for the Neisseria meningis CG, so that's core genome multilocus sequence typing. And actually that's going to look and do a comparison across over a thousand genes of the core genome. You can adjust some of the settings here. So as you can see, core genome analysis. So the percentage of isolates that the locus must be present to be part of the core genome. Well, all Neisseria are quite closely related, so you'd expect that most of the genes will be present in all of the ones that we have selected. But I'm going to put this to 80% just to be sure. You don't need to include anything at this point. Okay, this is if you're comparing an unknown against an annotated reference genome. For this, I'm going to use this here. Calculate mean differences. This will actually um, form alignment of the sequences for each of the gene. And as it says there, it takes a little bit longer. And then at this point, you can press submit. So as you can see, it takes a little bit of time to do this. So I actually did this earlier and the output you'll get is something that looks a bit like this. So it's quite a large page of information. So once the job's done, it will say finished, 100% complete. And you'll look down the page here. And what you have here is analysis against defined loci. So for each of the uh, strains or species, you can see here along the top and then here locus. So that's the gene, what that actually encodes as well and its presence as well. So X means it's not present. So you can see an E. coli against the other Neisseria. Some of the genes aren't there. So it's quite hard to actually visualize it looking like that. But then if you go to the bottom of the page, down here, you should be presented with some other information. You can have the output in various formats. One of the outputs is to select the Excel format. So the table that you saw above on the web page, you can then actually have an Excel format. You can see for all of the genes, if you have a look down at the bottom of the page, it's actually looked across 1600 genes and it's looked for their presence across elongata, gonorrhea, lactamica meningitidis, mucosa, and so on. So you can see, obviously, in some of these species, genes aren't present where they are present, say, for example, in the pathogens and lactamica, which is quite closely related. The other thing that you can do here is you can get a basic tree up. Now, it's quite hard to see when looking like this, but it's tried to calculate some kind of connection between these visually. This information here, you can actually download. So if you go here on distance matrix nexus format, click on that one, you'll get a distance matrix. Okay, so this is what is used to actually create phylogenetic trees. So this is for all of the species that we put in. Looking at that, it's hard to see, but we're going to import this into another program. If you go up here, save this page as it's important. You can't copy and paste this. You need to save page as. Okay, so I'm going to just put it back into the folder where I have my genomes. So keep it in this format. Once it's downloaded, if you look in that folder, you'll see you've got this here. So this is what we've just downloaded and it's next. So it's a Nexus file. So it's a file type that's got the information to build a phylogenetic tree. So that's for the 1600 or so genes comparison across them. If you go back and have a look on here a second, you'll see here, this was created the neighbor net tree, but it's created by a program called Blitz Tree. So Splits Tree is a piece of software that will actually create phylogenetic trees. If you want to find out where you can download a copy of that, if you have a look just here, 
you can see um, University of Tübingen. Then have a look down here, Algorithms in Bioinformatics, Splits Tree. So you can actually download a copy of Splits Tree. I've actually done that already. I'll just bring up Splits Tree. Now when you see this, what you need to do is then import that file. So file, open, find out where you saved that Nexus file. So in this case, I put it on the desktop. You go into where you saved it. Now down here, you're looking for Nexus file. And now you'll see it there. Just select that and open it. Now the image that you're presented with it actually looks fairly similar to what you had before. If you want to get this into, I personally find it, it looks better and it's more easy to actually understand it when looking at it in the uh, traditional tree format. So if you select trees, neighbor joining, Distances, neighbor joining, apply. So you need to hit apply, then go on to draw, and then select filogram. That will give you this filogram image rather than the circular image that you see. I'm going to select cladogram here. So it will assign groups of organisms into clades. Uh, hit apply. So this is what we're looking at. As we were saying before, it's looked at a total of about 1600 genes and based on similarities, it's then clustered the organisms together. So as you can see, we've got an out group, which is E. coli. Our unknown is here. So we suspected it was one thing. We've done some analyses on it. If we look, take a look at our table, we knew it was Neisseria. We thought it might be Flavicens, say for example, or Subflava or Perflava. But actually, perflava and subflava and flavicins are almost by well, the biovars, so they're very similar. But we've got another one in here, so RMLST predict this could be Neisseria mucosa. Now, the alignment suggested it wasn't mucosa that I did using Mo, but then we're using this whole genome comparison or looking at the core genome to try and assign this to a particular group. And we can see here our unknown actually fits within this cluster here containing the subflava. So a good fit for it as suggested by the other evidence. So when you're looking at subflava biova perflava flavicens, obviously we're looking here that the core genomes fit within this uh, cluster containing Neisseria subflava. So you can see E. coli is an out group, but the other ones, so the pathogens here, gonorrhea and meningitis and the closely related lactamica are all clustered together. But we can see our unknown doesn't fit within the cluster containing Neisseria sicca or Neisseria mucosa. So it's quite interesting. It's just another level of analysis that you can do.